Hello, Dr. Rowe. I'm really hoping that you can help me. I've, um, I've worked most of my life and I've paid off all of the mortgage on my house. And so I have two children. One of them is 27. The other one is 34. And both of them have asked me if it would be possible to lend them some money from the equity from my house. The biggest challenge that I have is that I really... I'm just not sure of the benefits because I figure in the future at some time I'm going to pass away and my house is worth around about £400,000 now and maybe in about 10 years or so it will be worth around about 800000 so I figure I was just going to leave them the house and they can have the equity when I pass away. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Hi Gerald, thank you so much for your question and I've got to tell you, you are not the first to ask that question over the years running hundreds of seminars on property, getting face to face live with different audiences. It is a very common question for parents that have children and have worked hard but at the same time want their children to benefit from that hard work at some point in the future. I can feel a sincerity in your voice as well. And I think the most important thing here is you've got to ask yourself a question. What is the outcome that you want for your children? Do you want them to wait another 10, 15, 20 years to get the benefit of that equity and the money that's in the property? Or do you want them to have the benefit of it now so that they can start to create and change and maybe have a different lifestyle whilst you're still around? And the two are different. The first is what you've described, which is sitting on the house. It's, it's an, a philosophy that we've had for many years, particularly my parents had a similar mindset, and that is that you leave the house for the children in the future. The second is an opportunity that wasn't around when you grew up, which is to release equity, to get that equity working, and in so doing creates a passive income and a greater value for the children now. So for example, and this is very simplistic, 100,000 chopped up into 25,000 pound deposits would buy another four properties, each worth 100,000 each. So actually over the next 10 years, there'd be your home worth 400 plus a portfolio worth 400, which would possibly double over 10 to 12 years, which means in total, your children have access to the 800 of yours plus the 800 in the portfolio. Think about that for a moment. Okay, so I guess, my only concern is if they release the equity or take the equity that I release, how am I going to get it back? And also, how do I know that there is going to be a benefit if they take that money from me? I'd like to have some sense that in some point in the future, maybe I can still leave them with that equity. Gerald, this is a great question, and I think it has to be answered by you sitting down and talking to your children as well, because ultimately they need to be using that money, taking guidance on it, maybe being mentored, getting some knowledge on how to do this, and buying properties in an area where they can get cash flow and ideally some long-term capital growth. But there's another factor to this as well. If, on the other hand, your children do get support, they get some mentoring and some knowledge and learn how to build this properly as a business through both the good times and the tough times. And I know this from personal experience. If you don't pull together, you don't necessarily get the best results. So from my experience, you have to be aligned. And when you're aligned, what I've seen is a great movement forward and there's definitely excitement within the family. So I think that's a conversation you're going to have to have with your children. It's my belief, and I know this from personal experience, that your children need to be aligned. They need to be of the same mindset and have a common goal to work together. And if there isn't that common goal, unless you're splitting the money and giving it half and half, you have to remember that you're giving them an opportunity to take that money and ultimately develop a business. And if they don't have a business acumen, the training, the knowledge, the support, the mindset, this may not be the best route and actually maybe better to leave it in the house. Hmm. So what you're saying is that the equity from my house could actually help them produce some residual cash flow, like a, a passive income. And in which case, the equity in my house is almost dead money until I release it or they release it in the future. Whereas now they can actually get a genuine cash flow from the equity through buying buy to let properties. Ha <laughs> ha! You're a fast learn, Gerald. That, that's exactly right. Again, it has to be done in the right location, the right type of property. I mean, look, if you took 
in, in simple terms, 80,000 could actually be chopped up to 20,000 pound deposits. You buy 80,000 pound houses, put 20,000 down on each one. That's five properties. In the low value areas in the United Kingdom, for example, that could get you 250 pounds per property cash flow. Let me just clarify that. That is the net. So your gross coming in minus the mortgage, minus the running costs, minus the management fee gives you around 200 to 250. Your 100,000 pound has bought five properties. So that's 1,250 pounds per month net cash flow. Now, of course, I'm generalizing. You'd have to do research and find those areas where it happens. But what it does, it enables that long term cash flow to be created over a long period of time, eight, nine, 10, 12, 15 years. Gerald, the other thing to remember is the equity literally is sitting there in your house. It's not creating a lifestyle. You can't go to a restaurant and pay for a meal with that equity, but you could do from the cash flow that it is used to buy cash flow generating properties. Now, again, as I say, you must take advice, guidance, uh, speak to an independent financial advisor about what's achievable, but absolutely. And of course, the other thing to consider in all of this is how long do you want to leave that equity out? So for example, they could buy the five 80,000 pound properties over the next two years, for example. And then you might have a plan to agree with them that over that period, plus a few more years, depending on the time frame, they have the ability to refinance those properties. So if they've bought them below market value, they can add value, refinance, pull the original equity back out and ultimately give it back to you if that is what the plan is. Wow. I I never even knew this was possible. I'll have to speak to my wife about this. Uh, What's the next step if I want to do this? Uh, I mean, where do I go next? And what's the best conversation to have with my children? And and also, where should they be investing? A lot of questions, obviously. (laughs) Um, The the question, where do I start? I think, yes, have a chat with your wife, obviously. Uh, Speak to your children. I think that's really important. Sit down as a family and discuss what the long-term plan is. You've worked all these years. Do you want them to wait another 10, 15, 20 years before they get access to that? Or under a sensible guidance, do you want them to actually do something with this that enables not just them, but possibly you to get the benefit of this now rather than at some point in the future? In terms of where do you start, uh, my suggestion would be to go over to my website, drrow.tv, www.drrow.tv, have a look at the YouTube channel, and that will give you some guidance and some tips, at least at this stage. And there's some good stuff there on mindset, which I think is important at this point. And I wouldn't worry too much about where you're going to invest, because you need to get your strategy right first. Once you've got your strategy right, then you choose your area, then you start to buy the properties. Education is essential in all of this. The other thing, Gerald, and I have talked about this, I believe, in one of the other videos that I've done, either on YouTube or on my website, and that is to find yourself a good mortgage broker, because without a good mortgage broker, an independent financial advisor who can look at your situation, you won't really get a handle on what's achievable in terms of equity release. So I think go do that, talk to your family, have an honest conversation around the table, and well done for asking the question. It's a great question, and all the best in the future, Gerald. Dr. Rowe, I can't thank you enough. Um, It's really been quite eye-opening. I know it's just a short exchange, but I have to say it's really given me food for thought. And I agree with you. I think we need to sit down, have a really good chat, find out what my children's plans are for the future as well. And then we can work backwards from that. And as you say, I'll go across to your website and we definitely will seek out a good mortgage broker. Thank you so much. (laughs) 